Welcome, everyone. We have Rodney, Jan, Goran, Dave, Mohammed, and Jamie, roughly in that order of arrival. My name is Michael, and today I know that Goran has some questions for Jamie. Go ahead, Goran. Um, there's a um, patch I was writing to parse all the jlconf D files in one go, making it possible for the dependencies to work if they are uh, split around, uh, split across the jlconf D files. And that makes also the uh, global parameters or wildcard jails work if they are split into multiple files. Uh, there were some concerns by uh, some people from the group that I fixed. So I um, I can't say it's in a perfect shape because I don't know, but at least uh, me included, nobody knows any um, anything wrong with it. So it's ready as it can be for the review. Now, Jamie, can we get that through to 14? Or if you could take a look and tell me if there's something wrong with it, I can work on it, not this weekend, but after this weekend, I'm free, basically. Not something wrong with it, um, but I think the direction is a little off on what I'd like to see it. I, I do want the idea of supporting you know, all the multiple files at once. But most things that have configuration files manage this via a single configuration file with includes. Have you looked into that direction? I, I, I realize that you've done all this work on it and that's a completely different way to do it. But uh, that solves that problem and also uh, opens up new possibilities as well. I actually didn't know the parser as it is has include. That's the point. Um, it doesn't. Huh? Oh, you mean oh. introduce it. Okay. Um, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. There isn't an easier solution. Uh, how does uh, the jail command open the config files? Does it use the st uh, standard IO libraries from libc or does it use system calls directly without going through a struct file? Um, it's Lex and Yak sort of stuff, so I'm probably doing it with libc because I suspect that works. Because in that it's case, we could been use a number of years. A, a rather uh, underappreciated feature in libc uh, uh, that is f fun open, and that way you can get a file handle represented by a bunch of uh, callbacks, and these callbacks implement the read write close and so on, seek even. And uh, this that way you could have something like a wrapper, which feels like a thing, single read only file. And in reality, it just uh, matches all the files with a glob or some other pattern, sorts them and consumes them as one stream. And anything using the file abstraction uh, in libc doesn't notice. Okay. But it's part of libc. Um, I think that, that seems it would solve the problem you've already solved with the patch you have, though. No, I mean, it sounds like a good way to do it, but it sounds like also you know the patch that you've put up also already uh, handles the multiple files situation. Well, yeah, to me, it also sounds the same. Uh, the, the implementation and the reason I chose the path to implement that I did is that it's least intrusive. It doesn't uh, yeah. change anything. It's just, I would say it fixes the, well, not the original idea, but the uh, original idea of splitting the files, uh, splitting the jail definitions into multiple files. But yeah, yeah, Jamie, if your if your verdict is to go with uh, 
new let's say directive or for the include no, no mm -hmm. problem how would it uh, look like do you have example or you want to see how creative i am i mean i haven't really thought it out to the point of getting an example i just uh i i thought of it a while ago but never really went anywhere with it i there are um ideas and pitfalls with it because uh, you i'm thinking you could include something and including a jail variable in there so you could that way include say a per user file on the other hand that means a sing single file might be included multiple times with different uh, variables being replaced and that sounds like kind of a headache to support so i don't know if we'd want to go there but yeah, Just, you know, and record, wish list having, and ideas at that point. Having includes work recursively, and I mean, I've seen. Uh, I just assume, Jamie, you did that part uh, with uh, dependencies and marking if I went through the dependency or not, and detecting circular ones. I suppose something similar can be done with include. Yeah. Um. The problem is uh, you want to have optionally includes and includes with wildcards. Otherwise, you lose the flexibility to compose snippets together. Because yeah. have, and the other things, to, which jail.com already does quite well, by expanding the current variable set and again and again, you want to avoid writing certain things like the jail name again and again into the um, snippets so that you have to uh, create a unique templated copy of the same intent for each jail or each instance of something, which is something a lot of configuration formats get wrong and then the uh, automation around it becomes annoying and slow because you have to template things out instead of just drop a file in there and sim link it you now have to and it's even worse if you have to reassemble it into a single file yeah yeah there's there is a lot of room for for doing it wrong with this and that's <laughs> that's one thing i like about the patch you have is it's already there and it doesn't you know it doesn't uh do some of these things that i thought you could do with includes but on the other hand it is, as far as I can tell, yeah, an already working solution to a situation we already have. So, you know, maybe we could keep includes as a uh, future direction and I should still just look into actually approving your patch. So question, would includes be in any way fundamentally incompatible with this approach? Could they coexist? May a thousand I, I would say includes existing. Okay. They can technically uh, coexist, but it's a bit of duplicated code. We have how many packet filters and, and virtual <laughs> network <laughs> stack? Come on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's how we roll. That's <laughs> fine up to a point where it uh, becomes a mountain mm. of obstacles and legacy you have to remain compatible to. And it uh, prevents you from progressing on anything important because you have to run, write regression tests for 8-bit ISA cards before you can remove the giant clock. Right. Um, <laughs> instead, we took a decade to finally accept that uh, the kernel has grown too big for the physical address space of those things. Yeah. So you couldn't boot a modern kernel on it anyway. <laughs> okay, so if we introduce but, the functionality, people could be using it tomorrow morning and then build into their products and we, we're stuck with that. Are there any like really nagging concerns of this approach? Because, you know, Goran's taken his fresh look at it, done the work, but maybe, you know, collectively we're missing something, some edge case. I, I would think that um, with the addition of a separate flag for the inclusion of multiple uh, config files that people who want to go a different direction if there was a directive later on just wouldn't use that flag. Um, there's one we problem for C, and that's quality of life on the command line. Because if you always have to pass a flag or a path to a config and a flag, 
uh, and the default behavior of the of jail, for example, doesn't work anymore. If I just run jail dash r to stop a jail, and ah, it will yes. not follow the includes, then the whole CLI interface breaks down because now I and it's also a problem if you want to do things, for example, from a dev D hook and have dev D do things. Now all of my dev D things have to follow the incompatible extension to the CLI interface. So you break the assumption that it, what used to work works for all jails. For example, a jail wouldn't get shut down, but it wouldn't unmount its file systems or other cleanup stuff required because it doesn't know about this post shutdown hook. Go you had a the, comment there. Uh, yeah, Jamie, uh, the, the patch is already with a separate flag is dash capital F for, mm -hmm. well, it was free, no, no special reason. <laughs> so uh, you can enable and disable it. And Jan, you don't get to, to uh, be against it because it's what it was your idea. Uh, I'm not <laughs> against uh, the idea of uh, doing this. I'm against the idea of requiring an extra flag. Instead, what I would, pr would prefer to see as an operator is to have if a configuration file in a certain place exists or some directory exists, then this is the thing jail uses to change its default behavior. If I, I have mean, a I etc can... jail.inc or something directory in my slash etc., then it's enabled by default. The the problem with that is yes, yeah, something like etc jail.d is, you know, if I was going to have something where I could say include jail name.conf. I would yep. probably put that in somewhere like etsy.jail.d, but it's already getting included. I know, which is why with... I work dot .inc or something or... Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, you I... could do that. You could just have a separate directly location because the only problem I see with adding the patch right now without this flag that oh, it currently uh, has would, would be solution. the overuse of directories. And yes, you can always use another directory. Um, the first time it gets used, it could set a um, um, basically a lock file in the run. The what? Uh, so the lock put, file in var run? The first time this flag gets enabled, to enable it by default from now on. Oh, that's... That's a bit flimsy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Why is it flimsy? <laughs> We're talking we about one time data. Running, um, and that's not desirable. So I think that the core of this problem is how to migrate from A to B. And the general pattern in FreeBSD is you say in... Um, let's say 14, that this thing will be deprecated. You have A and B available in 14, and then in 15, there's just B. That's that's what we do. Um, Ideally, since um, eight land, or so, I've been wanting faster. to deprecate yeah. the um, shell version of jail configuration, but boy, there's pushback on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think the everybody wants the, the best of both worlds and um yeah at some point things have to move forward someone will eventually decide to rewrite mixy cron for example um good luck to them <laughs> but everything has to move forward yeah rodney you always have an opinion any thoughts here yeah you've done lots of this how does this work in practice um yeah no maybe okay <laughs> there's i do not absolutely do not like the idea of magic things like oh i do this once and so i go touch a file and then it's on from then on because that's called hidden hidden perturbation of behavior and that's just mm -hmm. an absolutely nasty thing to do to people um which and, is why i would have preferred uh, if this configuration file or directory exists which is intentionally created. I'm okay with if if directory exists, but the the, the magic, other one is the, uh, the magic. The magic yeah. file name can only be used by one feature, so they have to. You have to have 
jail.d and jail.inc would be fine. I'm fine with that concept. Mm -hmm. um, but make sure that, that if there is a magic file, that it only changes one set of behavior. It doesn't. Oh, yes. Yeah, because otherwise people get really messed up. But that's those are my opinions on it. I'm not a jail user, so I don't get to speak very loudly. <laughs> so um, what about make it like an rc.conf setting? And then it's a, it's not that the tool makes it on first run. The situation I'm thinking of is one where there's multiple jail tools being used. Um, so I, for me, there's a, a, a current issue when um, I have some stuff with IOCage or ISL and some stuff with base jails and there's Pudria running, it's 99% through uh, and I restart the jails and my Pudria dies. Um, uh, I think I the, the, just came up with a clean solution which shouldn't surprise yeah. anyone that's in a new con uh, global configuration variable to put in jail.conf. Yeah, so that they, they were, and they, they were, they feature level two or something. The, the problem with either of those, rc.conf variable or jail.conf global variable, is is global and i may not want all of my jails to have that behavior set it to off in that case in this jail and that's on you is, well is it inside the jail or outside the jail it, it's probably you set the default outside and then you set, can override it per jail with an inside setting i'm good with that so if you of course you have to be able to disable busy just it uses whichever is active at its level, uh, and then you can just enable it. And previously, it would have been a syntax error to have it, so it can't be in existing configurations. So, if I understand you correctly, the configuration variable could be part of a global config, but not a jail config. No, it. it is right, you need a way to opt out for some jails to preserve the existing semantics. But uh, you could have uh, wait, a setting to, you could have uh, just a list, an array of uh, include locate patterns, basically, which you would append to. That uh, should work. And you can use the existing equal and plus equal operators on a to add globs to uh, include. Yeah. One quick thing about opting but, uh, out, this easy jail won't know how to opt out to, uh, Making uh, jail.conf behave properly if you have it split up in a way which is already supported. Hmm. So my quick point on opting out, the legacy tools will have no notion of future behavior of opting out. So just think about opted out they by default, don't have to, I guess. They don't have to. Uh, they just don't, don't use have the feature. to unless they uh, presume okay. to know okay. all variable names. And that's on them. If, uh, th in that case, we are not forward compatible in any meaningful way. Goran, do you have a list of flags to choose from that are available? <laughs> but, no, but I'm thinking Let's say we merge it as it is. How would we break it? Because it's you wouldn't about this. Including... No, no, no. How how would you make it break and say, okay, this is bad? Because this is what I'm thinking. That flag doesn't exist currently. And I introduced it so it's not the default. So everything that doesn't use it, it's going to will behave as it did before, or at least I intend for the code to do that. Now, how are we uh, backwards incompatible if dash F is introduced, as I said, mm. as a non-default argument? Not at all. We just have to keep in mind that maybe as an operator, you always have to keep in mind that there may be some script left by your predecessor which makes use of this and stuff. So, and uh, as a developer, you have to maintain this feature now. It's part of the interface you committed to support. But it is uh, preserved. 
I mean, the, that's my argument. The current behavior is the same if you don't have dash F uh, but if, in your uh, script. At some point in the future, uh, we get a better feature. Something you like, where you prefer. You still have to preserve the existing code, you improve flag, and whatever comes next. So okay, that's I a, see a problem. It's, it's just that we have to support this as a maintenance burden then going forward, which shouldn't be a reason to uh, stop you from doing it. It's just how much of the maintenance burden is it? It's how much of a depth are we taking on by adding this feature? If it's just a small change, then fine. And Goran, do we have because you for the long haul to babysit it? the state. Thing. Sorry, I didn't understand okay. any of you. Sorry about oh. that. Finish up, Jan. Um, I just want to see that this was not about wanting to s s prevent this feature from getting in. It's just that's the cost I foresee that it's now something. First of all, uh, there are more states the system can be configured in. So if I inherit a running configuration somewhere, I have to uh, know about this. And now always, which would really be annoying is if there's some way I can have a working system and someone adding a jail using this breaks the existing automation. But you really wanna shoot your foot if you, you're doing that. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's about what you parse. Mm -hmm. And if you want to parse all the files, mm -hmm. that's cool. If you want to parse only jailconf, that's also cool. Mm -hmm. But you, if you want something in between, yeah. I think you have a system administrator who doesn't know what he wants. Yeah. So... Uh, <clears throat> The reason I asked how would we break it is uh, I'm not against the change or maybe my uh, patch is inconvenient in some other ways. But if we talk about uh, keeping compatibility, then the question is with what? I mean, or uh, let me be more specific. Or how would this even break? Because if you look at the patch, what happens is that uh, you have at the beginning uh, parsing of the file. And then once all the files are parsed, mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, well, what the jail does. Uh, I mean, jail utility with the parser uh uh, in the next steps, it replaces the variables, it does the, the dependency and so on. But if you're, um, if you look at that patch, it, it's gonna do everything at the beginning, so to say, of loading mm -hmm. the files. And the rest of the jail functions don't even know if, if it was multiple files or not. So it's, retaining compatibility with whatever I could find. And that's the reason why I'm asking, how would we break it? If we end up saying, well, we can't, maybe then it's not a problem for the include, the future include uh, keyword. If we do find how to break it, then let's let's see what mm -hmm. are the ideas to, to avoid it and to, to make it better or refuse it, or, I mean, reject it or something. Uh, so it's not about, is it going to be included or not? Uh, I mean, accepted or not? It's more, uh, do we really have to dance around it or not? Because my argument is that I can't see how you're going to break it unless you want it. Uh, can you post the link to the uh, patch you because yeah, uh, there I, are multiple ones question. floating around? I saw your question in the oh. in the chat. 
looking for it right now. Because I think I have gotten the wrong uh, patch here. Yeah, you got Entronics and... Oh, my God. Okay, well, the discussion can go on until I find one. We we let stuff sit too long in reviews where a small number of people get very worried about it and not nearly enough time putting it into current and saying to people, we've done this, please give us feedback. Current is the place where FreeBSD moves forward. Reviews are the place where we, we debate stuff. And I would far rather commit stuff and have someone come back and say, here's a really bad reason why you shouldn't have done that, rather than have it sit and stagnate and then come out in 15 and in, in, in a year and a half's time. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that my, my personal thing, reverting stuff is fine. We have revision control systems for this. Um, and we have so much good stuff that sits in PRs and, and reviews um, and forks. And it's not in the system because someone was afraid to push the button and have it in there for, for, for that last bit of feedback. We've got current, we've got stable, then finite goes into release. And we have 14 coming up. And this would be great in 14. Yes. Uh, that would be nice to have. I, yeah. I don't know if it will still make it. I would like to see it as is. Uh, I would also like to see uh, a bunch of regression tests making sure that the variable scoping uh, m- makes sense, but, but that's on the testing infrastructure to make sure that we run regression tests to make sure that variables actually get assigned the right scope and so on, and that there wasn't some corner case overlooked or whatever, but this doesn't look too intrusive. Sorry. <laughs> Jamie, also a question. I didn't find any tests for uh, jail utility, but I didn't look hard. Did I miss something? I haven't written any. I, <laughs> I behaved badly in not doing so. <laughs> That's why. What an opportunity. Uh, Goran, <laughs> how much have you tested this, in your opinion? Um. Well... You're looking at me through the system that uses it for the past, I don't know, since I wrote the the review. Okay. So that's why I say I I couldn't find a way to to break it. Okay. And we uh, have to keep on that. The jail utility is just a command run right now at the beginning and the end. It doesn't do a lot and complex things at runtime. So either it starts and shuts down correctly or it doesn't. It's not some complex not database which could uh, get corrupted over time or something. But Dave's so state machine. To... Yeah, it's <laughs> not so really a clean state machine. Somebody yeah. said Dave. <laughs> so, Goran, are you happy to own this for the coming weeks, months, and years? For... Well, of course, to help it my my, yeah. my soul is sold to the beastie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jamie, any comments on his choice of the F flag? Is that is that intuitive to you? It's as good as uh, any. Yeah, it makes sense. Are there other? It goes with the existing little F for just naming a single file. Was that your rationale, Goran? I can't remember, but for the for the sake of me showing up uh, uh, oh. non good fate, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Am I correct in seeing that there are a whopping four flags so far? There must be an R correct uh, to stop a jail. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, what I am I missing? Synopsis uh, is missing quite a lot. The the description, sorry, and the synopsis, but yeah. Where would I find oh, the but you're, dash R? You're looking 5.4. Oh, really. thank you, Google. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so kind of you. Oh, let me try that again. <laughs> it's like, wow, flashback. Here we go. Okay, so right. taking a look at this. Yeah, we, we should talk about this bit, by the way, because... um. I think we could improve this uh, section. But that doesn't belong in the same uh, review, right? 
No. 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 <laughs> be nice. Not, be nice. We could leave that for a later discussion, but uh, that's super confusing for, for me at least. Okay. There is the precedent of alternating lowercase and uppercase flags with some relationship. So dash F might indeed be quite appropriate. That's um, very common to have. Yep. Amen. Does your case. review have the manual page updated? Bum, bum, bum. I can't remember. I think Let's it take does. take a peek. Yeah. Okay, so we've got jail. We've got uh, lots. We've got config.c. We've got a slow system. <laughs> no mention of uh, jail.8 in the whole review. No, it doesn't. Okay, it so doesn't change the uh, JMN page. So there's some homework for you, but if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, why was okay? Go ahead, Rod. There's an order of includes that got changed there on ARPA slash inet dot h and net inet thing. Why was the order of those includes changed? You got it right there on the screen. Oh, uh, wait. The ARPA, screen is too small here. Well, ARPA, ARPA inet.h was moved down later out of alphabetical order of the pre include by pass length thing where they're normally up there. I just don't understand why that change exists. <sighs> I can't answer. Okay. Is Good it, catch. The, is, well, is it? Yeah. Know. That's cool. just a. It just seems odd to me to be changing the order of includes. You're not, I don't think you're modifying any code that affects net inet or ARPA. Yeah. And it makes the diff larger and there's a problem putting and it things violates through style. this review back and forward. Yeah. So it would be nice to put it in its own commit. If, well, I don't know that there's a reason to change it. But no, but yeah. It, should Preserve some header break, then. it should become its own commit so that it's easier to follow the commit log. Okay. Good catch. Yeah, I'm going to defend myself with the Fifth Amendment. Is that the silence one? <laughs> hey, that's popular these days. So, you, yeah, I guess you're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's in fashion. Yeah. Uh, should I slowly go through this from the top for other similar catches, or does each person want to take a moment to review it on their own time? Well, I wrote the patch, and looking at, at it like this is confusing. So okay. I'm enough. just guessing that, that others have the same confusion. Well, this revealed the lack of a manual page update and the change in order of operations of those include. So, Jamie, does that sound like a reasonable minimum to-do list for Goran? Oh, let me uh, look at the list here. It's a short list, but <laughs> those two items popped That's up. That's it, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and if there's not a reason to have them, then I don't know why it was changed. Probably just, yeah, there's no reason to. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a problem with putting it in. It would be nice to uh, make the 14 cutoff. Speaking of which, um, I see Antronig has something in here. Is this one and the same? And or, or is this a different thing? Maybe that's jail CTL or jailer or something. Uh, um, I think that's the same. So my understanding of the 14 uh, release cycle, I don't have the link right to hand here, um, but we have this sort of hard cutoff where we have to get the kernel stuff and, and sort of... Um, <laughs> Help me out here, Rob. The, the kernel, the, the kernel interface, sort of locked and loaded, and that shouldn't change much. The kernel binary uh, interface. Yeah, thank you. The ABI, exactly. Oh, no, that went. Yeah, and then after that, um, there's a little bit more flexibility with stuff for user land and things that are run that are unfinished. So, the main thing is anything that changes the ABI here. Yeah, 
and especially something in user land that adds an extra flag. Yeah. It's not then, you know, that's because we're just looking for, yeah, late stage changes to existing behavior being a problem. Yeah, let me find Rob, um, uh, Glenn's email here. So, so yeah, uh, jail, 14 yeah, really so we have that are 14, um, that are 14 friendly that we'd like to go in. Here we go, 14 release cycle. Um, I can't find the link to it, but I can find the, the thing. We all know it's going to slip because of um, open use. Exactly. Um, but is anyone up to date with the discussion around open SSL and private libraries and the fallout for PAM and uh, NSS? I think there's a ticket for it on um, bugs. I, I flipped through the last emails the last couple of days and I don't think there's a consensus yet on what's required. It looks like pain no matter which way we go. The problem is, uh, as I see it, there is no acceptance for taking on the maintenance of open SSL 1.1.1. Yeah. Uh, neither is the commitment to get rid of it. So, uh, but someone has to m move. And mm -hmm. while ports can change, the problem is that right now, uh, for a long time, OpenSSL base and uh, OpenSSL and ports have often been at least API and most of the time even ABI compatible. Yeah. At least in the basic things, so that you could link, for example, a PEM module from base into a daemon uh, installed as a port. Yeah. Because even basic things like checking the password database requires the cryptographic uh, algorithms taken from the base open SSL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that I've written on this uh, to in the relevant uh, mailing list thread and there's no uh, non-trivial common PEM configuration which wouldn't get broken in both directions. <laughs> but so um, libfetch is easy by comparison. But um, the fallout for PEM and for uh, NSS modules from ports, at least uh, there are no real modules in uh, base because all the modules implemented in base are part of libc. So uh, things like looking up the hosts file and the DNS resolver. But this is going to hurt. <laughs> okay, we've certainly given that topic some love. Any other thoughts, comments, concerns, questions, hilarious jokes, you name it? How many people have slash user slash home? Oh, I have a few old systems <laughs> with that Zim link. Why do you ask? It's just a 20 year old mistake that's getting propagated. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, now, we're now documenting the 26 year old mistake in the man page, rather than <laughs> fixing the 26 year old mistake. And for me, that's the wrong direction. We should remove what literally the first line of the commit to create a user home says, this is an ugly kludge. Mm -hmm. And here, here we are propagating it, the kludge now into additional places. And it's, it was done because 26 years ago, people were creating parti parted systems with a small slash root and a slash user file system. And by default, 26 years ago, slash home would then end up in the tiny root if they didn't bother to create a separate home partition or move it to the free space hog. 
and so the, yeah. the, the kludge got recorded in the repository and the installer now knows about it and creates the links and it's just you just have to uh, delete the commit log and call it a religion <laughs> <laughs> yeah rodney should that be on the list of 14 planning is that something you think uh, would get some uh, traction <laughs> there is the X list, It'll right? Be a massive bike shed. You know, you will, you all know this. Have be, need it, one. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's see how, let's see how religious the little teeny opinion. threads gets yeah. on committers. That I've already made a comment about the commit that documented it, and and, and it's just right. You want to take an part. X to committers? <laughs> Bob. Um, you can put it in the X candidates. Add. User slash home. Dave, you have access to that file? Yeah, anyone can you just log in and click. Well, you uh, use you know, that word log in. Okay. Um, I've got one here. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of things. I just added um, the El Posic stuff from from Kyle Evans to this list. And the that's got a couple of things that are interesting for us from jail perspective and, and lower in particular it gives us um, fork and uh what else fork pipe read write um and real path so that's pretty handy yeah so the the question was really really for, for jamie for you last few weeks we've been talking about stuff and you've been thinking is that a user land or a jails or a, like a kernel kernel thing has there anything in your um um sort of mental list that would require changes to the to the kernel interface here to the ABI that we've talked about. The one big change I see that we want to make to the ABI is the jail descriptor. Um, that, but that's a compatible one, and I don't see us doing that in within the fourteen point zero time. Yeah, period. right. Yeah, that's that's just too new. Um, on the fourteen level, I don't see anything, but on our list for the kernel. Yeah, um, it's a tiny one I would like to see, and that's a, a VNet related change, which I hope is easy, but I'm not certain. And that is VNet related uh, changes are never easy. Uh, well, <laughs> it's not a change to the behavior; it's just reporting a change which is already supported. And that is uh, creating a DevCTL event uh, any time an interface gets renamed or or moves uh, between VNets. Right now, if an interface gets renamed, that doesn't create an event, and neither does uh, moving it between VNets. It's handled as a normal attach or detach. And getting an event telling me that basically this interface moved from this VNet to this would be very useful. And it wouldn't really be a functional change because there's no, I don't see how it could create new locking problems. It could only expose existing ones. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it sounds reasonable. It's, I've never done anything with DevCTL and so for all my, my involvement with jail, not much with VNet. <laughs> um, I have a, for example, a VNet jail is destroyed. Uh, the interfaces get reparented. That's already implemented to the parent jail, or to the container. Mm -hmm. uh, or so, and the problem is that the jail doesn't know if it has the so or the whoever gets this device doesn't know if it was freshly created or um, moved between jails. And so, for example, let's say you want to apply something anytime a tunnel interface with a certain name is created you want to do perform some configuration on it but you do but if it returns from a vnet in some untrustworthy state you would just want to destroy it and recreate it this is a problem and the other is that renaming doesn't create a, but that's not vnet related renaming an interface doesn't create an event and so devd doesn't know how it's not way basically to track the state across renames because you just don't know how this interface got this name. Mm. 
for example. I think right by now, uh, things like the Tantap driver ma uh, tra handles its own um, uh, sim links in slash dev to the original name, or even renames the character device. But it used to be that you had to manually create your uh, uh, sim links. Those would be super handy along with the um, existing K mod for um, for file system events. Yeah, and the, for file system events, file system events are already in the kind of the jail events are the jail. It's the J the JL. You know the yeah. what I mean. Yeah, getting that in base would be useful as well. Yeah, but oops, how much? I haven't looked how intrusive this code is and if it's properly written and Should what's the license on it. Add it to the list. Might be in Rust for that matter. Um, no, it's not. It's a kernel module. No. Uh, yeah, just a moment here. Let's get a mute. Should be a really tiny kernel model if I remember correctly. Yeah, it is. It's this one here. But it's good to know that these events it's are even available. Tiny. It's um, it's two hundred lines. <laughs> Going I'll over this module uh, during import and. 14. Would that be about... on the list? Yeah, definitely. I'll put it in the um, things that exist out of tree and can be upstreamed. I'll put it in that list. Um, sure, just putting this existing kernel module and it's already under a compat under the right license. So it, it's always one of those things. Here's some code that solved my problem, and then someone who's with more experience goes. Yes, but it needs, it doesn't take it, it's not good enough to go into the tree as is. Yeah, yeah. but if it's a module you have to load, it's yeah. just nice to have it always available. Who I should know. kick that into a review? Florian? Um, Maybe I'll, sorry. I'll put on my name here in the to do list and I'll contact um, okay. Fabian and ask him um, what his feeling about this is, and then I'll see where I get to. Yeah. Regarding um, the quality and compatibility, it's still works in 14 and the last commit was in 2019. Yeah. So it right. can't be too bad. Yeah. Um, and and it's our CTL, isn't it? So the, the, the thing that's interesting about that is it's another way of dealing with the problem where you have jails that don't shut down or start up correctly and you need to have some external thing that cleans it up. It allows you to automate No, that. it's not really. Yeah. It's intended as a way to... Okay, did you guys say anything interesting over the last couple of minutes? Sorry, I'll, I'll read the yeah, screen you solved everything. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, has been included to uh, take the uh, dev CTL jail kernel module and uh, consider importing it into base or even just making it part of the default kernel if it's not uh, as there are no downsides to having it there. It's a tiny less than 300 line uh, kernel module to create dev CTL events for uh, jail state changes like a process attaching to a jail or similar things. Kind of things that we're looking for in the descriptor world. Do we still need descriptors if we use that? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Completely different part of uh, overlapping problem set, but this is something very different. Uh, this is basically getting notified about potential changes to objects in shared namespaces rather than avoiding the shared namespace in the first place. This is that you don't have to poll every five seconds if the jail uh, parameters have changed. 
or a jail died or has been created, if you want to implement some uh, control engine out on the host, to basically, if a jail dies, we start it and lock the fact that it died and so on. Right, that's that's what we're looking for with um, with with the uh, K-Vent stuff. That's not something that dev control can do. I don't really know dev control. No, dev CD, the problem, with, so there are multiple limitations with dev CD. For example, right now it's only available in the, in the um, real root. So you can't have dev D running in a jail in a meaningful way. Okay. Because the dev CTL device, can be opened only once until it has uh, been completely closed. The reason is that it's a synchronous pipe of events from the kernel to user space. And if this pipe blocks um, by back pressure, you can uh, slow down the system to a crawl or even completely live lock the kernel. Because of that, the um, can only open it once, and but it handles the redistribution and dev CTL isn't really jail aware in the sense that there are any events in it which are scoped to a jail. So all of the event producers don't know about jails and so they are global. And some of the events you don't want to have available in every jail. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're right, completely different things. <laughs> but Think about something like a, a Linux Kubernetes like controller where you want to start a jail and if it dies, you want to learn about it and you don't want to pull. Yeah, yeah. That's what this DevD is. And I think some of the adva some advanced jail manager developer implemented this to get exactly this functionality and to learn about if anything else modified the jail parameter and so on. Just load the kernel module in a test VM and uh, create a bunch of jails, attach to them, detach from them, and you see which uh, messages uh, are written to the DevCTL device. The easiest way to follow the stream is to just cut the pipe where uh, Dev D, um, if it's, oh, has a consumer just writes out a replication a stream of all of the events. So you can just cat this uh, pipe and get a mirror of all of the events as they happen, which is very useful for debugging when you want to see which events to match. Okay. For example, I used this the other day uh, for my WireGuard RC.D script which is now just at the point where I have to write some comments while I still know what I did. Oh, uh, go ahead and post a link to that blog post. People should be aware of it, even if we don't uh, discuss it, but yeah, maybe we should. that blog post. Okay. Need to be right. Uh, uh, overcome by question. events. Uh, I have a question about the kernel module. If you Which look one? at uh, the DevCTL jail, mm -hmm. if you look at the, but how do I use it section, uh, the commands on line three and five for system how do CTL. I use it? Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah. How, how the, did that get there? I mean, that, that's so, uh, so, uh, system uh, well, D, right? System D, no, there is no system D on FreeBSD. Yeah, can but you, look at the, can the you link to the what? Okay, Which file? Let me, let me, let me copy we can't see your screen. Read Please me. share a link. But it might be this repo, correct? Yeah, that's that's the repo. And in the README, you have this command ah. go down, go yep. down. Look at the first block code and lines three and five. There is system um, CTL restore syslogd. Good question why it's mm. called that. Maybe they ran some- Maybe like, uh, the Linux channel. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I assume. Some even kind of even Linux if it work, I don't know. But uh, there is nothing systemd related uh, in this. No. Uh, the proper command would be service. Yeah, what It could actually be as simple as a, um, as a brain fart 
using system CDL instead of uh, service there in the example. Yeah, it's possible. And the thing is that DevD has to be restarted to reload the configuration because it's a stateless daemon. That's not a problem. The events will just get buffered until uh, DevD reconsumes them. Yeah, I mean, the, the rest makes perfect sense. Just these two commands are kind of quirky. Um, yes, they are. And the... <sighs> The nice thing is that you get uh, events like let's test it here. I have a machine. Uh, so let's see. I mean, I know there is no system D because I think Dave said it's 200 lines of code. And if we replaced system D with 200 lines, <laughs> <laughs> system D, the good part. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so here's an example event produced by this kernel mo uh, module. Uh, if you jxec into a jail, Well, Jan, you can already do that. I mean, in the DevD. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, what you just posted in the chat. Uh, once you have this kernel module uh, loaded, this is the type of events DevD gets to uh, match against. Okay, okay, thanks. And then you can run some action. Like inform my, uh, it could be as simple as t uh, forward this line to a named FIFO uh, and your jail management daemon handles the event. So let me restart a jail. Oh, um, that's a bit noisy given my jail configuration to make a good example. But you already get by default all the uh, file system unmounts and mounts. <clears throat> Any other thoughts relating to either that kernel module or the wish list for 14? Yes, I had two, two things. Um, yes, please. Which you touched on in the, in the past. So one of them was we talked about UUIDs. And when I looked into this, um, I, sorry. But briefly, the, the use case is you have some process that is root but not trusted enough and you want it to create a jail, but not that it gets to set the ID. And, that, and that's important. So if, I, if, the, if it leaves it blank, um, the UID field then is populated by the kernel, um, but I'm looking for a way to enforce that. I don't care if it's a flag or an off by default thing, so that the UUID is always set by the kernel and not by the uh, the root user. So that was one. I don't know if that's possible. And the second one was about storing um, additional metadata of some sort um, in in the kernel. And those two things are super interesting for me. Um, I don't really 
mind what the metadata is initially i would be totally happy with a large string where i can stick a, a json blob um but what would this like is, is what would this look like for 14 is that something that would require changes to what we already have for the abi i guess it would is that to not lose your setup state or setup information on the long the main thing here is to, to be able to tag jails this jail does that yeah yeah so at the moment that state has to live somewhere else and it should live with the jail so that when the jail disappears um you that state is gone straight away did we lose jamie did we jamie he's muted have you stood stepped away or simply muted no, I'm I'm still here. So, so why was root not? Mm, that doesn't compute. You. Did I type this wrong, Dave? Let root create the jail, but not set the UUID or JID or what? Yeah. So we have two types. So we we can create jails inside jails, right? This is the sort of the typical use case for this. So mm -hmm. what you want is that inner jail to be able to create stuff, but not to be able to set the UUID. You want that to be provided by the system and the the sole reason for this is that then you know there is one way of referencing the jail from outside that you can guarantee the child jails can't mess with i i suspect people are right now who care about uuids they'll have them hard coded into config files and that would break yeah even it's at the moment um um there's not even a optional thing how about um, if you want to implement this, have a keyword which is right now because it contains some forbidden uh, character not allowed as a jail name trigger this behavior that the kernel replaces the name by a, the string representation of a UUID. This is like putting a dot or a star or something in. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't solve the problem of no, yeah now if we want to change the behavior of how a jail parameter is defaulted you know we've got sys controls for yeah we can add a sys control for doing that sort of thing yeah that's that's sort of what i had and what, what i was thinking it wouldn't be a default because as you see you want to break existing behavior um yeah that this all circulates around the problem of you've got a jail you need a process, uh, you've got a jail inside jails and you can't trust, fully trust that. And you want to be able to do things like mount a file system or do some other configurations, which requires the real root outside the jail to do things. And you need to be sure that there's no way for that to create a race condition, which we can't currently do, um, if that makes sense. Or at least I, can, I, I can't see a way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's another uh, thing I, you know, kind of had on my mental to-do list is, yeah, arbitrary, arbitrary data in jails, uh, you know, a, a separate maybe subsystem like, you know, jail dot, you know, parameter env dot something arbitrary or var dot something arbitrary where you could, it's never interpreted by the kernel, but, you know, you can set it and read it as, yeah, just as needed. Jail is that like state. ZFS properties where you can just give your own personal property? Yeah. So yeah, something see. like that. Something like that. Yeah. I'd have to yeah, figure out how to. The uh, jail properties right now them. are a horrible tack on top of sys controls as far as the um, the uh, the sys controls that define what the format of the properties is and how things like jail.8 know what list of properties to look for. And I'd have to figure out how that works with properties that could exist in some jails and not others, if you know you can set arbitrary properties, but mm. it might be a way around that. That's that's one of the uh, things that kind of blocks that concept. The idea of like a single, just a single string, say this is the one thing that you can set in the jail, jail dot arbitrary stuff. Yeah, gets around that, but not in a tidy yeah. way. Yeah, right. And then Dave jumping on to metadata in the kernel, 
would it help to, I don't know, just save off what was executed somewhere and worry about it and parse it later, deal with it later? <clears throat> what would, what's a short path to what you're after? Uh, so, so, so the, the first one, right, there's no workaround for that, the, 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 the un, untrusted jars, but the second one, there are workarounds, which you stick them in a file and you glob them up and reload them all the time. So that's, I've, I've messy pseudo solutions for that. Um, it's just not tidy. Yeah. Um, so for me, the second one is we should do that properly. And for me personally, if that's in 14 current or 15 current, I'm fine with that because that's, that's what I use. Um, <laughs> uh, but the child jails are not, yeah. Um, that's, that's a piece of work. We should figure out how to, how to do this, who, who can do it, and um, if, if necessary, find some funding for it. What yeah. is actionable on these two points? I don't know. Okay. Uh, can we can we uh, just a second? The the JSON blob is well. It sounds like an envy list. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have to be JSON, right? It's just some sort of right. arbitrary, yeah. arbitrary. Stuff. key value stuff. Flat flat tags is fine. Yeah. Well, yeah, the NV in envy list stands for name value, so that that's basically that. Yeah. Well, yes. It would be like um, NVList. I mean, the whole jail parameter thing is like NVList. In fact, as far as I can tell, the uh, the code that I hijacked to use it, which was the um, nmount name value stuff, is practically the same as an NVList, just is from nmount instead of from ZFS. Nmount or nmount? Nmount. Um, um, nmount system call. OK. And, yeah. It's I, I just noticed that that the, was a way uh, that you could pass arbitrary names and values into into the kernel at the time I was working on the jails, and so I used it. Okay. The problem with nmount is that it's a flat list, and the problem with nvlist is if you have is that you or why you still need a flat list is that uh, you may want to have multiple writers update the properties of a jail. Two processes handling different aspects. One provides storage via the network setup, for example. And they both have to attach some kind of metadata to the jail, either in user space or with kernel assistance. And if there was a one blast global one true NV list per jail, you have a problem that you can have only one writer for this. If someone replaces it, mm. you're out of luck. So now you have to provide a locking or a rewrite. The simple answer is just have a flat namespace where you can have key equals value and the value can be NV lists. Mm. Oh, I see. So yeah, I always, I was always thinking in NV parsing, list. Just have the kernel hold on to a, a named blob. Don't Make it complex for the kernel. Go ahead, Jamie. I was, thinking, I, was, I was thinking NV lists as where the name is a parameter name and the V is the value of the parameter. I was not thinking of, of an NV list as a value of a parameter. Okay, but that's how net recursive data structures look in NV list. The problem is if you have one NV list containing all the settings of a jail mm -hmm. and you have two processes, a, a interactive command from a user and a dev D handler or some other daemon trying to update the jail state at the same time. You have this read, modify, write uh, problem. B to, you read the old NV list, you modify it, you replace it with another NV list. Well, we already have a read, modify, write this. problem problem anytime you're getting stuff from the kernel looking at it and then writing it no matter yes. how you read from a jail look at it and write it you have that problem yes but right now you have a namespace where you have a list of named things and you can replace one name if you replace all of these names by the one to nv list 
you always have to replace it all. Okay, so yeah, that's a weakness with envy lists. I suppose I'll need to look at a very insightful it's, man page. It's just <laughs> yeah. something where there are no silver bullet for. I think I think also to bear in mind this this thing still has properties. It doesn't have an NV list with all the properties. It's the kernel that's, tracks. That's the syscontrol hack. It has a bunch of syscontrols with all the properties. That's not a hack. That's better than most alternatives. Dave, you had yeah. something? Um, so I think one of the things that's um, bearing, in, bearing in mind here is, is this thing in the hot path? And changing metadata on a jail is definitely not hot path things. Um, even on a very busy system, you're not going to be doing these all the time. So it doesn't matter if it's a compare and swap thing from, from user land's perspective and that it maybe needs to retry or reload. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that makes a difference. I guess what I'm saying is if you have to lock something and then do it and then release a lock, that's fine. It's not like we're shipping network packets here. Also, I, I just checked the their, uh, take functions with the Anvil list, which are basically remove something from the Envy list. So you don't have to replace the whole Envy list. You just do. Parameter, you, no, you don't. Yes, you there do, is, because you have to do it at the point where you cross an address space. This is updating a tree structure in your address space. But if you and the kernel do not share a trusted address space where you get to modify kernel data structures from user space, that cannot be. At that point, you can uh, remove the memory management unit. <laughs> I still don't get what was the, okay. Let me paste okay. into so, the chat. No, the thing is, what I want to prevent is that they lose a useful feature, and that is that someone can update one parameter of a jail and someone else another one, and they don't conflict and unless they want to modify the value for the same keys. Does that make sense? Mm, let, let me just write it down. It's mm -hmm. going to be easier. Okay, so you have these two functions that are taken out, and you can remove and add something to the to the envy list, which is practically added. Not really, that's, but the closest. That's to added in place. That's fine. The problem is that you can't do that between whatever process modifies the jail in user space and the kernel. At yeah, some point, quite... you have to pack it and replace the NV list stored by the kernel. <clears throat> if you look at the NV list um, API, there are pack, pack and unpack functions. Yeah, I just don't know why, why that's relevant. Because I mean, uh, the kernel does not have the same, while well, it has a, can look into your address space and modify it, um, you cannot share an NV list in the sense that you have a pointer to an NV list and you both modify it. But you're protected with some lock or something. To, that that's not a problem. Or I'm. That is I'm a huge something. problem. Because you, and how you exchange NV list between processes or process and kernel or kernel and process is. You do this by serializing it into a byte stream and exchanging that over a socket pipe or whatever works in your situation. If you could write it out to a file, then someone else passes this binary data structure back in. So at the system call level, it would be something like jail set parameters and you would send it a blob and it would replace everything. Otherwise, you get an API which would look almost oh, exactly well, like the existing one. But you don't have to. I mean, you're updating parameters. You can send one parameter in Envy list 
Um, exactly. That's what I was asking for. We need to, a way to update it in that case instead of replace it like we are doing right now. Right now, you replace a parameter. You do not have a system call right now to append to a parameter. And we would need to replace this key or basically quad operations. Read, you create, mean the, the, update, delete. You, you, you mean the current API doesn't have uh, edit? Uh, I mean, append, sorry. No, if you want to append to a parameter, you have to read it and replace it. And if two processes try to append, you get uh, multiple times even, you get uh, garbage. And you have to have them um, agree on some locking protocol. The system calls alone aren't enough. The way I remember MVList is that it has an array. And if you're appending something, that's appending to array. So I'm missing- The API has... is, is, what you're modifying with the API is the data structure in your address space. Yes. It's not synced to the other address spaces. To do that, you have to serialize this and exchange it unless it's in shared memory and the processes mutually trust each other and um, have managed to map the same pages to the same virtual address, which is maybe an opportunity for high performance compute applications, but not usable for this uh, type of work. Okay, it would be unnecessary to, to continue. I still didn't understand, but we're going to talk one-on-one -on -one yeah. and I, I yeah. want to understand this better. <clears throat> Welcome, Phil. Right. That said, uh, Dave, would it help to have a flag that says, hey, dump out the configuration in NVList format to the file I specified and let the user worry about it from there. What do you think it would look like to the user? So I'm not quite clear which which, which thing is this for. Which, uh, we, if I'm not mistaken, the dump your blob might it might sound like an envy list, and it might be like, okay, let's just save everything off, let the user work with it. Okay, so today you can run jail dash dash libxo stuff, and you get it all there, right? Okay, so. Today, that's fine. Um, we can get all the info. Um, we just don't have the ability to put custom information in there. I should actually have another look because maybe there is some way I can actually sneak that in into some existing field or something like that. Um, I, I'm not quite clear what um, dumping an envy list out to a file would mean from user perspective. That's me trying to Nothing interpret good. your... Yeah, Your... it doesn't. Okay, fine. Envy list is like one of those things, in my understanding, of here's an easier way of shoveling things around between kernel and user space that doesn't require turning it into like JSON and then reversing it at the other end again. Got it. Um, don't quote me on that. Please don't quote one me. One of the things which but, makes envy yeah. list different from other serialization formats is that its API and its design support file descriptors. So as long as you're on the same system and exchange it over a Unix a domain socket, you can also uh, exchange file descriptors or arrays of file descriptors, which is what makes it a lot more powerful than uh, JSON or other serialization formats for low-level system tasks. So there is libxo support? There is it, yeah. Is it somewhat supporting well, current? Yeah, in um in jail already, yeah. In um like even in eleven, I think, definitely in twelve. In the jail eight command or a different command? It's in jail. Command? It's the JLS command. It's it's output oh. only. So it's output, so it's JLS. JLS, uh, okay, got it. JLS, that's right. Yep, yep. Great. There it is. Okay, let me fix that in a minute. 
so that's for running, but at startup time, you do not have that, and you'd like no. to preserve that? Is that an accurate regurgitation of what you're aiming for? Yeah, I guess that's what we're trying to do. Yep. Just to be clear, I, I, Jason is, I, I don't care if it's Jason, it can be key values, it can be anything. Right. Um, okay. Just some arbitrary st structured thing where you can put keys and values in some form. Yeah. And the canonical use case for this is a bunch of jails that should be web jails, a bunch of other jails at a back end. And what we want is an outside system to be able to just query those jails and then say, do stuff, do stuff with them, hook them up to a load balancer. Um, and at the moment, people try to hide that information. We encode it in the jail name, all sorts of places. None of it, which is the right way of doing stuff. Anyway, this is a um, question about can one we do way something this theme? could be. And I think the answer for that one is Sorry. probably not. Um, but maybe that goes in 15. Maybe we have something for 15 for that. Yeah. One way uh, this could uh, help make life better for the user space would be to the ability to have a set of tags associated with uh, jails so that the fields which are now oftentimes encoded into jail names could instead live uh, as dedicated tags. So for uh, multi-tenancy, you could have a tag tenant equals and Stuff like this, and then you could group them according to these uh, tags. What would the tag be in a kernel? Uh, a simple key, string key equals string value. So just short strings. I don't want to sound dumb, but that sounds like unreleased too. Yes, that would be a good use case for the list. Um, and 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 VLIS would be a good way to exchange this information. But having the kernel know that, uh, basically, give me the jail ID of all jails where tag equals value. Or where a tag, this tag is defined. Maybe even the ability to stop all jails with this tag. But basically those would be jail parameters. Yes, there would right? be parameters which only have a semantic meaning to user space, but are still preserved. There would be yeah. parameters and it would only be a strong convention to use them in a certain way. I mean, we already talked about having the whole config file, the, the whole um, jail definition saved in, by the kernel. And Envelist was mentioned there too. So maybe we are reiterating to that by discussing about the tags and, and uh, um, uh, well, no. other NVList alike implementation. NVList is an implementation detail. But it's a I didn't good say implementation, that. But it's an implementation detail. What matters is what, what information do you exchange as NVLists, not is your information stored in NVLists? So but what we are gravitating around is how to track mutable state, how to name it, how to reference it, not uh, how to serialize it. Are there any low hanging fruit opportunities for the upcoming 14.0 release related to that? Because it's a great discussion. It's arguably started day one of these calls, mm -hmm. but do we have any if answers today? The... <laughs> If these additional parameters can carry binary blobs, so random data length terminated, uh, they can also hold NV lists, and you can have a flat namespace of potentially NV lists. 
and then you can put in this feature and have tools use it with NVList, which uh, would then enable structured tools to work on top of that. So the kernel doesn't have to parse it. It only has to preserve blobs. It should probably put some reasonable upper bound in there on the memory used per jail, maybe even per child jail, so that a jail couldn't create an unreasonable amount of uh, memory usage that way. So that if I allow someone to create 10 jails and each jail gets a megabyte of metadata, that's fine. But if I have a jail and someone clever comes by and says, well, if I have a jail, each creating a sub jail and so on, and suddenly someone can DOS your system by creating 100 gigabytes of key value pairs just to be funny in a university setting or something, this could be a problem. Okay, so that said, does that sound like an accurate synopsis on this notion? Yeah. Ship it. Oh, well, of note, you can fit um, 31 bytes of stuff into OS release. Um, <laughs> Um, so, careful there. Uh, the OS I'm just, release. I'm, just saying, uh, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying it's a terrible <laughs> idea because OS release already has a meaning to a lot of people. Well, all I'm saying is, this 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 places I can stick stuff if no one wants to complain. <laughs> Who owns this idea, Dave? You proposed it. Do you want to noodle on this further? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of what's the minimum. The minimum useful thing would be add minimum right, viable add um, with a lit, with a fixed the size. The minimum useful thing I can see is human. Uh, so string keys, blobs as values, and for operational reason, a limit on the total kernel resource consumption. So basically, it would probably be good to just limit. Yeah. have a limit on the number of key value pairs and the total size of, uh, limit the size of the keys and mm. the total uh, storage requirement per jail of all values. So this. Yeah. So the trick is from the user land side to come up with some way of naming this so that later on we can switch out the, you get 30 bytes today with Here's the same flag and the same function, but now we have more storage space and more slots. That would be ideal. And then we could have a um, small short term thing and make a better version um, in future. I'll think about it. The 30 bytes isn't the size I was thinking about. I was thinking about limiting you to path max for key length and hundreds of kilobytes, if not a megabyte per jail of total storage for the values. So that basically, as long as you put text or small structure data in there, reasonable users will not run into limitations. You can embed your full name of your jail manager or whatever daemon you're using to mess with this or your user land tool, the name. Basically a simple little object store. Okay, on that, uh, I'll, that's a perfect closing note. I perhaps would like to say enough on that topic for now. A simple object store. Uh, welcome Toasterson. Uh, you clearly have an opinion on this, any thoughts? Welcome, welcome. Uh, not, not a lot, but yeah. The only thing we do, I know, is that we put envy lists everywhere. So it's like, welcome to the land of envy list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but internally or ever user facing? Uh, considering most similar to ZFS. Okay. Uh, it's like uh, internally, and then we just 
make it we have this pattern by the way yeah that's maybe for something that's the, that you may want to look into so whenever we have a command we have uh, a way to have minus o as a flag and then we can freely specify which uh, keys we want to get out of the key value store that we have in there in the nv list and we have the minus capital h which allows the printing or or so presses the printing of like the column names. Yep, yep, yep. And this kind of thing becomes quite important when you have like key value store. So like and we list in there. Absolutely. So that's the interface we see in ZFS, open ZFS all the time. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I and love uh, it. made it done as OSD object. Uh, what is it now? OSD, I forget. Object specific data or something like that. Yeah, Unless I'm mistaken, the, the JLS also has capital H. Yeah, oh, yeah. perhaps not. <laughs> um, oh, print a header containing the list. Oh, so you it's can a, add rather than subtract, a, perhaps. It's no, yeah. the header is okay. With libxo, you can do uh, most of this. Because if I remember correctly, um, libxo can produce CSV, right? No, I think it does XML and um, H, um, JSON. Uh, I don't recall what else. HTML text, whatever text is, depends on the command. Yeah. Yeah. The only other one that we use is minus p, which makes it parsable by simply yeah. taking out tabs yeah. and putting. It's a little yeah. bit on like minus p is the one that is completely different between every tool because um, it produces different output for us. But when you do it co consistently, it makes scripting a whole lot easier. Yes, sir. Uh, P in ZFS uh, prints uh, especially numeric values as a full numeric value instead of uh, humanizing the output. Correct. To, so, exactly. for example, if you list the size of a Z vol with dash P, you get an exact number of bytes. Correct. So that you don't have any uh, rounding errors or differences between. 1000 and 1024 megabytes and so on. Well, that gets a plus one from me. <laughs> mm. But one of the things uh, ZFS does to keep the scripting friendly is to restrict the available alphabet. So, for example, ZFS. Uh, data sets, snapshots, and so on are limited to a certain character set, which is uh, shell friendly. So you can't have a back tick in your uh, user property name. Correct. That's a good one, yes. Whereas, for example, FreeBSD allows you to name a network interface asterisk space asterisk. Nice. <laughs> good luck <laughs> getting the RC uh, scripts to handle this. I'm afraid to test what happens when I name my interface back tick mm -hmm. RM dash rf slash star back tick and try to shut down. Yeah. yeah. You get the best compression of your backup. <laughs> 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 I get to go for my backup, you mean. <laughs> so. Yep. So. That's something to uh, think about if we do add uh, these pass-through parameters to only to hold on to them to uh, in the kernel, their namespace should be restricted to uh, scripting-friendly names. And inversely, would it might be would it be worth lobbying the IF config folks to? go a little easy on what they accept as naming, because that sounds uh, terrifying based on what you just described. Um, 
as I say, I haven't tested what happens because I didn't want to risk it. Okay. But uh, I'm sure there are lots of scripts out there which b will break just because uh, the rc.d scripts uh, don't quote the uh, don't quote the interface name cons consistently. Cool. Any yeah, other last topics the, on 14? Go ahead. The the one thing we have is the the double points because that one is for user specific names because they can namespace those with uh, like the same way you do namespacing in Java. Oh, you mean colons? With colons, yeah, you mean? Colons. Yeah. Yeah, colons, but ah, yeah, colons, yeah. Uh, Double colons. Yeah, exactly. you have like the namespace there, like you have in, in, in Java, like org dot openindiana yeah. dot kaiman dot install and the colon. And then you have the uh, final value there, something like that. Ah, <laughs> not double columns, no. Um, yeah, the oh, jump yeah, yeah, for it is you. double yeah. punct. Yeah, 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 double, double, double. Yeah, it's not Perl. It's not Perl. We just need one yeah. double punct. Yeah. <laughs> one colon. <laughs> cool. Well, your um, timing was perfect. Great. I didn't mean to corner you. Well, I did mean to corner you, and you had the right answers. Beautiful. Go ahead, Dave. So, what's next? What's next? Anything else in the 14 list? Because that I, let's try to get something in there. And I will say happy two month anniversary. Eight videos are up out of, I believe, nine calls. And if we get meaningful things into 14 0 release, then I suppose this time has been well spent. If it hasn't, oh, well, this yeah, can be the last really call. Everyone, so I totally appreciate the time and the explanations. Yep. We're approaching two hours. Anything else? Uh, Toasterson, do you have anything to report? Or are you just fly on the wall? Yeah, I'm just a fly on the wall here. Cool. Mohammed, we haven't heard from you. Well, another fun though. Well, I have a question, but maybe after the recording, because I'm not sure if it's in the context of the call or not. Uh, broad topic, be it ZFS. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's more just an observation uh, that that I see that uh, also in relation to Ihiro's presentation that these calls are more uh, either on one level it's about the internal of the both jails technology for jails and the Beehive. But uh, for Joe specifically, given that it has intersection with other container technologies, about the tooling that is more uh, what I call intrinsic to FreeBSD. So, is the topics about how to like make other tooling that's maybe more common or trendy outside the BSD or FreeBSD world and make it work on top of the uh, FreeBSD jails technology? Is it a topic to bring here or not? True. Sure. It's all fair game. Um, as long as we prioritize developer topics up front, and mm -hmm. we've you know we got to have a fantastic beehive time timekeeping discussion, which is mm -hmm. probably a topic that's rarely received much attention. So hey, if if it's important to you, you can probably easily convince us that it's important to us. So, um, what's an example of that? For example, I, I love the in general, I love the ZFS conventions, especially for scriptability. If that was everywhere, great, I'll take it, ship it. Um, so how does that relate to your seeing other technologies, either what do you like Nginx uh, on Apache sh or on FreeBSD, should it behave more like these things we love? No, sorry, not, not FreeBSD in general, but okay. uh, for, exa uh, for example, sorry, thank you. for example, uh, uh, Dave, I think that, am I saying the name correct? He's a Dave, yep. Yeah, yeah. that he referred to Ron J. And uh, the things that, for example, more trendy with the container technologies in Linux and make it work on container technology uh, in FreeBSD. Mm. Is that, that's why I said, if, is, is it a topic for here or not? Yes, yeah, so totally. So we, you, we will alternate weeks between developer kernel stuff and user-oriented stuff. And mm -hmm. it's appropriate in either one. Yeah. Okay. 
if, if it's the interesting reason, to you, it should go up. Great. The, the reason the reason for this is that it, in my opinion, I'm not sure if it will work or not. That that if that works, uh, it could be bring more popularity. If pardon my my term. And that hopefully bring more attention, maybe more muscles for doing more things, because I think it's one of the topics that there's a lot of things that needs to be done. And, and from what I understood that maybe uh, there is not a lot of, I wouldn't say not a lot of people interested, but there is not a lot of people who are actually uh, taking part of, of doing things as far, as far as understood. So my bringing more trendy tool chain runs on top of a, a, a well uh, established technology like the one in FreeBSD that can one bring popularity and hopefully bring more people and not just uh, interested into the tooling but also about the core technology itself. Uh, I'm done, <laughs> so, sorry. Is that the correct run Jay that I posted in chat? Yeah, just like an example, yeah. there was a lot of refers to other tools from the guy behind a pot. I don't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. Luca, Luca, yeah. Yeah. Luca with a C. With a C. Point taken yeah. on all of this. Italian, um, not Lithian. <laughs> Other thoughts, ob observations, ideas, concerns? I have a question, but Please. let me find the link first so it's easier to follow. Good, man. Um, Lead with the link. New rule. <laughs> old rule. New phrase for an old rule. So this is the link for the jailed man page. And if you, ah, it's kind of hard. Maybe better on the. Okay, it's on my screen. Is that helpful? Yeah. So okay. the first line of synopsis, what does that do? Yeah, yeah so I, I'm of the same opinion here. I don't understand this at all. Um, the um, first line is the old syntax to create a jail on the command line, basically, to create, modify, or remove a jail. Oh. Modify. So the, there you can say, run a command, and the C is for create, M for modify, R for remove. Yeah. And this is what you get without a configuration file. You can have it write the jail ID into a JIT file, which is like a PID file for jails. The uh, upper and lower case U uh, controls the case. One has the jail command look the user ID up in the host and the other in the jail. And the other, the individual um, parameterless flags you have to look up below. Okay, strictly speaking, for my, I've seen that part of code. I just didn't understand how it works. But strictly speaking, for my patch, the first line, I should ignore it. Uh, or better said, make sure that my code doesn't interact with it at all. Uh, maybe have some code check if the all flag is set, which is newly added by your patch, and that a configuration file has to be set or has to be opened or something. Because the jail does open the jail.conf file by default if it exists. If I remember correctly, right, Jeremy? Yes. It's an array. You have to be. Because if someone just does something like jail dash C a jail name, yeah. But if you don't assign jail name here, and you're um, in the old world. Should legacy syntax go last, not first? I, I'm what what what. 
what opportunities are here? Yeah. Yes, moving that down by now where nearly every new user wants to use some kind of configuration file. Yeah, so most of them is actually the first, the second line, isn't it? Most yeah. of the time, it's what we do these days. We have CMR, you can put your parameters on the one if you want it. Um, yeah. So maybe call it the old free BSD a long time ago uh, syntax or something. Yeah. Maintain for, for backward compatibility. That should tell any, any new user that don't bother yourself with the intricacies of this code path. I vaguely remember the, that part of code, and I think the the legacy syntax has um, has a special place in uh, in parsing. So what what I'm saying is that it's easy to detect. It's already detected if we are using a legacy syntax. I know there's some if that that handles that. I think it's just the uh, equal sign. Yeah, uh, the command equals no. Either you have named parameters equal something or a command equal something. You've you've got something after the initial flag that's an that's an equal sign, and then it says, "Oh, this is old style," and it does things like not reading the configuration file and stuff like that. Ah, all right. So then I understand one now makes sense. And then lines two and three make sense. And then line four, what is the difference between that one and the other ones? It looks like another sort of case of one, doesn't it? Line one, four and one look like they're the same sort of format. Uh, line four is the even legacy -er syntax. <laughs> All right. Line four is the actual legacy syntax. Line one is oh. the legacy idea of being able to create a jail without a config file, but actually a syntax that didn't exist before there were named parameters. So yeah, the old one is just... it's, a way, it's a way of making quick and dirty jails, jails on the command line, jails mm -hmm. without a config file at all, but it's not truly legacy like part four is. Okay. Because that's pretty cool because I actually end up using version one a lot now like all the time it's super handy um apart from it's very handy it's you know it's like uh, it's uh the easiest way to create a one-time jail yeah all the time and i for one love well bump into read only file systems and commands you can run without touching the file system can be delightful so just saying yeah. yeah, but the yeah. old syntax can only provide path, host, name, IP, before address, and command. All right, the stuff that old jails used to have. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. the jail had a process, root process, but yeah. And these days, you don't want to limit yourself to this syntax. But being able to take a configuration file from standard input is really nice for automation. Just pipe it in. Is Synopsys ever broken up, shall we say, by generation, by multi-decade generation? I mean, can you think of any, any other manual page, perhaps if config that might go there? Mm -hmm. Let me SSH into a system here. <laughs> I have config has a humongous main page. So I'm not proposing humongous, but some amount of distinction there might be in our favor. 
because the user is like, okay, here's how, how do I use it? Well, I once used it this way. Grandpa used it this way and could use it this way. And that I agree should be clarified. And my system's down from yesterday's power outage. So, oh. Uh, and there's a parallel discussion in chat, but Till, is that indeed the video? Okay, cool. Um, so, who, uh, Jamie, I, I suppose you have some implicit ownership over the, the documentation there, but uh, who has the greatest vision in their head of what this should look like to not confuse people more than they might already be? I did like to add some examples down the bottom um, of these things. So I'm happy to take a stab at this. Um, okay. Not this week, maybe, but in two weeks time. Yeah. The legacy one wouldn't even need an example, right? It would be it's like, I mean, if you really want to use this, you already have been using it for 30 years. And... Yeah, well, I think, it's I think not it's, an it's... excuse to stop someone from understanding a legacy yeah. system he yeah. Uh, inherits. Yeah, they're totally, yeah. I just want to put some like neon blink tags on it or something. I'm sure there's a uh, rough for that. Okay, well, that's a, a very valid kind of crossroads. And there's a discussion going on here. So I'm just trying to throw some things into the minutes that you might find of interest or others might find of interest. Um, yeah, just to, to put the discussion quick to it. No, that uh, YouTube video is the Linux one which was the basis for me doing a stream on it uh, because the idea to gain a little bit of attention in between the whole like streamer interactions is when somebody produces a video and you say like, oh, this guy has a, a video that he says like, oh, Linux is easy to install. You can go, oh, FreeBSD is even easier to install. And you make like a response video and post it to him. And it's like, you generate a little bit of discussion about it. I see. It's a very simple way to uh, generate attention. If we're talking about generating attention. So it's a Linux from scratch response, you say? Perhaps. Go ahead it's... and check those and make sure I get it right and fix them as appropriate. <laughs> you have permission to? <laughs> Will do. It's basically okay. a installing Linux, Linux is dead easy response. Got it. OK. Just installing cool. Illumos is dead easy. Well, uh, we've just hit two hours. Anything else remaining? Questions, ideas? Uh, the next two meetings will fall exactly on the FreeBSD Developer Summit in Ottawa. Technically, that's perfect. Technically, that's also imperfect. So I'm open to ideas. Maybe we just, y'all can have an informal meeting. Some of us might be tied up with that. Hard to say. In theory, it will be streamed such that you can follow along. There, I said it. Anything else? <laughs> Thanks all. Good night. Yep. Thank you. That was fantastic. And we have action items, especially for 14 So that's about all I can hope for. Excellent work. And again, happy two-month anniversary of these calls. Sounds like yeah. we should keep at it. Uh, well, uh, see you next uh, week or two weeks or whatever. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, and I'll work on calendar invites. Uh, and I'll, I will also stick around for a little bit for those who are mentioning things. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.